Canada from space. Covering more than 3.86 million square miles, it is the world's second largest country. Only Russia is larger. Perhaps the scale of its immensity can be grasped only from hundreds of miles above the Earth. But the diversity of its beauty can be fully appreciated only at ground level, where its wind and sand-carved rock formations, majestic mountains, golden plains, gently rolling hills, and vast lowlands stretch across six time zones. Most geographers divide Canada's vast and diverse lands into seven regions, the Appalachian Highlands, the St. Lawrence Lowlands, the Hudson Bay Lowlands, the Canadian Shield, the Arctic Islands, the Interior Plains, and the Mountain West, or Cordillera. The Cordillera contains two large mountain ranges, the Rockies, and the Pacific Range. Because the Pacific Range hugs much of Canada's western shores, there are many fjords in the region. Fjords are long, narrow inlets with mountain walls on two sides, and they often provide a good route for watercraft because the mountains offer protection against stormy weather. For the same reason, many ocean animals are found in the fjords of western Canada. In addition to animals and ships, islands are another feature along the coast. The islands are actually mountains covered by ocean water, except at their peaks. So the Pacific Range of Western Canada extends beyond the coastline. A large basin and plateau lie to the east of the coastal mountains. Still farther eastward lie the Rockies. Many rivers fed by melting snows from both the Rocky Mountains and Pacific Range are found in this basin area. At the southern reaches of the basin, a large number of orchards take advantage of this plentiful supply of water. Kiwi fruit, apples, berries and other fruits come from this area. The Canadian Rockies, as we've mentioned, lie to the east of the basin. To many people, the Canadian Rockies, these are in the province of Alberta, make up some of the world's most breathtaking mountain scenery. Many places here look as if they are picture postcards come to life. The Canadian Rockies are a major recreational area. Golfing, skiing, rock climbing, hiking, and sightseeing play a key role in the region's economy. A large number of islands lie northeast of the Rockies. These Arctic islands make up the second major land region of Canada. The three largest Arctic islands are Ellesmere, Victoria, and Baffin. Baffin is the fifth largest island in the world. Much of Baffin, as well as most of the other islands in the region, are located inside the Arctic Circle, and so are cold and snowy much of the year. Glaciers cover much of this area. The rest is tundra where the subsoil is permanently frozen and surface lands are covered with only the hardiest of plants. The climate is so cold here, trees are unable to take root and grow. The interior plains lie southwest of the Arctic islands. This region covers a large portion of Canada's midsection. 
the third of the country's seven land regions, it is for the most part covered with grasslands, some of which are used for horse and cattle ranching. Huge grain farms also are found on the interior plains. For this is Canada's breadbasket region, where it's not uncommon for some 30 million metric tons of wheat to be harvested each year. While a large portion of that wheat is used by Canadians, much of the rest is shipped overseas. Hay, oats, barley, rye, canola, and many other crops also are grown on interior plains lands. Canada's largest region, the Canadian Shield, covers approximately one half of the country's total land area. The Shield forms a vast horseshoe around Hudson Bay, except at the south, and for the most part is composed of ancient rock and low hills. The Shield is where many of Canada's large forests are located. It is also an area noted for its thousands upon thousands of lakes, as well as spectacular rapids and magnificent waterfalls. The next region, the Hudson Bay Lowlands, lies south of Hudson Bay. Sometimes called the Arctic Coastal Plains, it's covered by flat swamplands and stunted trees. Huge deposits of peat, or decayed vegetation, are found here. Although the St. Lawrence Lowlands make up the smallest of the Canadian regions, it is where most Canadians live. Toronto, Canada's largest city, with more than four million people in its metropolitan area, is located in this region. The St. Lawrence lowlands are mostly flat, but there are a few gently rolling hills in the region. Ponds and lakes often punctuate these hills. Some of Canada's best farmland is found here. In fact, about one-third of the country's total agricultural output comes from the St. Lawrence lowlands. Principal crops include corn, a wide array of fruits, including cherries, all kinds of vegetables, and canola, seen here, as well as barley, soybeans, oats, and maize. Now, on to the last, but certainly not least, Canadian region, the Appalachian Highlands. Found at the far eastern reaches of the country, large portions of it border the Atlantic Ocean. For the most part, it's hilly in the Appalachian Highlands. But geographically, the region is perhaps most notable for its rocky shoreline, with many small inlets and bays that provide excellent harbors for fishing vessels. There are many forests here, too as well as farmland on Prince Edward Island and along the St. John River in the province of New Brunswick. In fact, rich soil is one of Canada's abundant natural resources. It helps nourish the vast wheat fields of the interior plains, the orchard trees in the far west and St. Lawrence lowlands, and the vegetables that grow in the Appalachian region and elsewhere. Of course, all these agricultural products need water, too, and Canada has plenty. Water is another of the country's abundant natural resources. As already mentioned, the Canadian Shield has literally thousands of lakes, streams, and rivers. Water, as you undoubtedly know, is used for transportation. In Canada, most notably along the St. Lawrence Seaway, one of the world's busiest inland water routes. Goods move on ships to and from the Atlantic Ocean through the St. Lawrence River and over the Great Lakes. Giant ships, sometimes called lakers, carry chemicals, various grains, iron ore, 
high-tech equipment and other goods from Canada to overseas countries. Ships from foreign nations also ply St. Lawrence waters. They unload, among other things, manufacturing components to be assembled in Canadian factories. Many of those factories get their electrical power from hydroelectric plants located along the St. Lawrence River or elsewhere. Canada's vast water supplies make it one of the world's leading producers of hydroelectricity. Besides water and rich soil, forests are still another abundant natural resource of Canada. Forest trees, particularly evergreens, but other varieties as well, supply the raw material for the country's large lumber, pulp and paper industries. More on them in a few minutes. Fish are still another natural resource of Canada. At one time, the waters off the country's east coast were among the world's richest fishing areas. But overfishing has reduced the fish population there. Salmon are actively harvested near coastal waters in western Canada, however, as are prawns, sharks, halibut, and herring. Fishermen take perch, pickerel, and whitefish from Canada's many lakes. And game fishing is a major economic activity in many areas. Finally, minerals also rank as a major natural resource. Canada's mines produce copper, gold, diamonds, iron ore, nickel, potash and zinc. But it is oil and natural gas that account for most of the country's mining income. In fact, petroleum and natural gas account for about half of all Canadian mining revenues. Even with petroleum and natural gas, however, mining is only a small part of Canada's economy. More than two out of every three Canadian workers hold service jobs in the hotel and tourism industries, in education and health care, and in legal and financial services such as banks and insurance companies. Almost one of every five Canadian workers holds a job in manufacturing. Many of them work in plants that make products for export. A large number of those export-related jobs are found in petroleum and natural gas production, as well as in refining and petrochemical manufacturing. From command posts in highly automated plants, Canadian workers make paints and varnishes, plastics, and chemical fertilizers, all from petroleum. Other manufacturing workers produce goods mostly for Canadians, items such as automobiles and trucks. And then there are those who work in agricultural processing, cutting meat, storing grain, milling flour, loading wheat, barley and other grains into trains, and then transporting those grains to bakeries throughout the country and abroad. The remainder of Canada's economy, for the most part, is made up of two other industries. The first is the lumber industry, plywood and pulp manufacturing, and paper milling, especially newsprint for newspapers, but other types of paper as well. The second is agriculture, the farming and ranching industries, as we've already mentioned, wheat farming is a major part of Canadian agribusiness. But Canada's 280,000 farms also produce potatoes, corn, oats, rye, apples and other fruits and vegetables, and poultry. Ranching is also important. Recent figures show that there are almost 13 million head of cattle in the country. Canadian cattle ranchers supply the citizens of that country with almost all their beef. Those ranchers also export beef and beef products to many overseas nations. Ranked 14th in the world in cattle production, 
Canada is a leading beef exporter. Canada, then, is a huge country, one with many different regions and landforms, fjords, mountains, and a lowland basin far to the west, tundra in the north, waterfalls, rivers, lakes, and forests on the Canadian Shield, swamps with peak deposits on the Hudson Bay lowlands, and rolling hills and flatlands in the St. Lawrence lowlands. Finally, there are rocky coastlines and mountains in the Appalachian region. Canada is a country of abundant natural resources, rich soil for farming, abundant water to help nourish plants and to generate electricity, forests that provide wood and paper products, fish to feed Canadians and others around the world, mineral deposits such as gold, copper, and zinc for manufacturing, and oil and natural gas for energy. Finally, Canada has a modern, diverse economy based on many different service industries, manufacturing, and agriculture. Canada a land of breathtaking beauty and enormous diversity.